What is good, Gray Gang? We are out here today, me and Ethan, and we're about to upgrade the four-wheeler that Braden Price thought he bought. Now, that sounds kind of funny, and if you don't know, it's a long story. I'll give it a little summarization. Braden Price knew that I had this Honda Fortrax 300, okay? He's been wanting one for a while, so he called me up. He's like, hey, KG, let me buy your Fortrax. I was like, hmm. Okay, let me ask my dad. Because it's his, right? This isn't really mine, it's my dad. My dad said, no, we don't want to sell it. So I called up Braden. I was like, yeah, sure, we'll sell it. I didn't tell Braden, but instead of selling him this one, me and Ethan hopped on Facebook Marketplace, found him one just like it, and just sold him that one and said it was this one. As of right now, I still don't think Braden knows. Don't worry, guys. The one that we sold him was in just as good a shape, if not a little bit better than this one. So he didn't get a bad deal or anything, but we didn't sell him my four-wheeler. And now, we're gonna upgrade it. Now, a real quick overview of this thing. We don't know the year of it, but it's pretty old, I guess. And right now, it's not in running shape, okay? It'll kind of start, but then we think we gotta clean out the carburetor. The brakes are not too fancy. The tires are the big one at this point. It's four-wheel drive, so it can go anywhere, except for the places the tires won't let it, because they're all four ball. Now, my plan is for the four-wheeler is to turn it into the ultimate one-man hunting machine. So we're gonna go ahead and take whatever the heck that thing is off. We're taking the toolbox off, take off that extra extra weight and give me some room to strap something down. Honestly, I think we're probably going to take these off too, even though it is a gun rack, but I'm thinking what I'm just going to do instead is just get a KG gun case, put it across the front, and strap down bungee cords. That way it's a lot more stable anyways. And we're going to clean it and make this thing look minty. Fresh. Spear minty, ain't it? That's right. It's like it's like five guns. Long story short, me and Ethan, we're about to go ham on this. We're about to take this thing apart and turn this into the ultimate hunting and trail riding. Pretty much overall, the ultimate Kentucky machine. Let's get started. Alright guys, I put down the camera for, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes. It's pretty much ready to go. We got the carburetor fixed up. We did have one problem, though. The filter. I don't think we showed them the air filter that whenever we touch it, it disintegrated. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. No. Alright guys, if you don't know, a Honda 300 is kind of like, um... A dinosaur. Pretty much, but in the rear brakes, it's like a cable brake to where you squeeze something and it pulls the cable. The front brakes are actually hydraulic. That's I didn't know that. That's why you gotta put brake fluid in it. I didn't think brake fluid was a real thing, but I guess it is. All right, next up though, the tires. Yeah, we gotta take them off and go get new tires. Let's do it. There they are. All right, guys, me and Ethan's loading up. We found a place that has the exact tires we're wanting. I'm not really too picky on tires, though. Pretty much my only requirement is that they're not super expensive. They can put them on the rim for us, and they're not going to tear up the yard if I try to drive it in the yard. It's pretty simple, but we'll catch you when we get there. From boom to boom. All right, my guy. It's really dusty out here, but yeah, we inside. We get we on the side of the road. Standard Kentucky stuff. Um, the tires look good to me. I don't know that much about tires, guys. I'm not really a car guy. Talk about guns, I'm on it, dude. But talk about tires and carb taters and stuff. I don't know, dude. I'm just not that kind of guy. But yeah, he's putting them on right now. So let's go and check it out. They're, they look pretty nice. for the hunting part of the video. Like I was saying the entire first part of the video, I'm building this thing out to be the ultimate one-man hunting machine. But before we actually go hunting, I do want to say that you've actually already seen that four-wheeler right under your noses. Believe it or not, it was actually in my last video 
with Braden Price already here. You can see it in the background whenever me and Braden was riding around. Ethan was actually on this one, and we told Braden that we got it from, like, my cousin or something. We had to come up with something so that he wouldn't think that's actually the one that's mine. It's a long story, but we literally had this thing under Braden's nose, and he had no idea because we tricked it out. We made it look so different than it originally did that he had no idea it was the same one. But now it is time to actually get started hunting. What we're kind of hunting we're gonna do, it's summer, it's spring. I don't really know what it is, but it's squirrel season. And now I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna set it up to, you know, hold my gun and stuff. We originally did have the gun holders, but like they were just kind of forks and they wasn't super stable. So instead, like I was saying, I'm just gonna use a bungee strap. These things are your best friend if you have one of these because almost pretty much every bungee strap fits perfectly over the little bar things. But I I have my shotgun in here, everything I need. What I'm gonna do is this right here, run it right through there so that the bungee cord is definitely attached to the front. And then I'm simply gonna take these and come over here and hook them just like that. That way my gun's stable, it's not falling off anywhere, it's not sliding around. And if I'm ever not hunting, I can just unstrap that, take the gun off, and I don't have extra things sitting there getting in my way. So without further ado, boys, let's go ahead and fire it up. And uh, let's head on down. We're going by the river and we're actually gonna be doing some squirrel hunting. So let's go ahead and get that done. Getting into some rough stuff in a field now, that is no problem at all. But I mean, I've rode a decent little bit here. You've not seen a ton of it, but you can just watch as I'm riding. The gun case is just sitting there chilling. Like it's on the bungee strap. It's decently tight. It's not going anywhere. I'm getting into some slower territory so I can just downshift and go on my jolly way just like that. But the thing with the gun case, as long as each gun is in its own separate case or something like that, you can pretty much stack as many as you want on there and you don't have to worry about getting them damaged at all. And another thing that a gun case actually helps you do is if, for example, I do this right here and I accidentally like, drive through a briar bush, it's not out. It's not going to like scratch your gun up or anything like that. It's just going to beat up the case a little bit. And that's not really a problem. Also, if it's raining or something like that, you can put your gun in the gun case and don't have to get your gun wet. But hey, that's just me. You do whatever you want to. Whatever floats your goat, man. One thing you do got to keep in mind that's not so much on a side-by-side. -side. On a four-wheeler this small, you do got to think about where you're putting your weight and shift your weight in the right direction at the right time. Otherwise, if you hit a rock and your weight is in the wrong spot, you're, you're probably going to flip because four-wheelers aren't exactly the safest thing in the entire world. They're definitely better than three-wheelers, but they're nowhere as safe as a side-by-side. At least a side-by-side -side has a roll cage, and it's generally heavier and wider. One of these are pretty thin, which has its own advantage, but safety, it's really not its advantage, okay? But I mean, if you drive it like a normal human being and don't lose dumb stuff, you're gonna be all right, okay? Riverbank. I've hunted here before and I've seen squirrels, but I don't actually think I've ever killed a squirrel, so that's kind of a bummer. But that don't matter, guys, because it's hard to beat hunting on the river, even though there's not nearly as many squirrels here. Anyways, I am rocking my crocs, so that is going to inhibit my, my abilities to go places a little bit, but not a ton. And yes, it is the riverbank, so if you see garbage, it is what it is, I guess. So yeah, to get my gun off, I simply come over here, unhook it. Unhook it, and then it's off. Come over here, open this up, grab my gun, put shells in it, and then we're gonna walk right around there, and I try to kill a squirrel right over there. That's the plan, at least. We'll see how it goes. The gun I'm using is this shotgun right here. It's an Impala Plus. Don't have a clue what the world kind of brand that is. But if you watch my channel quite often, you may recognize this one from the one I got for turkey hunting. And even though it done great at turkey hunting, it's not specifically designed for turkey hunting, which means I can 100% use this for other animals too, such as squirrels. The choke I got in it is a full, which is perfect squirrels. And the shot that I'm using is six shot. Six shot is a little bit bigger than like seven and a half or eight. And that little bit bigger of pellets really helps whenever you're hunting something like squirrels because you got to hit squirrels pretty good, okay? They're not weak, okay? They are resilient. You can shoot them in the face, they'll pull out the pellet and throw it back at you if you ain't careful. I've had it done twice. One about killed a dog. It's crazy, dude. But yeah, I got those right there. Now we're just going to walk over here. But first, I am going to go ahead and get the key because, uh, you know, that'd be kind of bad. Lose the key out here, lose the four-wheeler. Now, when we're out here squirrel hunting in the summer, it's a little bit different than the fall. It's still pretty similar, okay? Like, they're still in the same general area, which is forest, and they still act like squirrels. But in the spring and summer, their food changes. Instead of eating nuts in the fall, they eat 
tree buds and flowers, stuff like that. So that switches which trees they'll be in. If you know a really good tree that has hickory nuts in the fall and squirrels are all over it, they may not be there in the summer because they ain't no nuts in the summer. And I'm not no professional myself, but I'm just gonna walk through the woods, stop, look, listen every now and again for just pretty much limbs shaking because they're not gonna be scratching on nuts because there's no nuts, I just said that. <laughs> but yeah, let's head on over here, hunt a little bit, see what we can do. Also, I don't think I'm the only guy with a four-wheeler here. Not sure if y'all care about that, but I'm not the only one here. Okay guys, I completely switched positions. I went from the very bottom of the hollers where the river was to literally a ridge. I just got here and I just heard a squirrel. So maybe it was the right move. I don't know, I'm out of breath. Even though I've only walked like 20 feet. Like my four wheelers right there. I don't know what the deal is. But yeah guys, I think I'm in a pretty good spot here. I think I can get a couple. We only got like 40 minutes left to lie. So hopefully I can get something done pretty quick. Shut me hard. He's halfway down, he's halfway good. I gotta go finish my job. That's kind of a long shot, but man, I had a full choke and a good shotgun. I thought I could get him, and man, I did get him. I just, let's just say he's not 100% dead, okay? If he had a med kit, he could probably make it out of this. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Do I wanna spin my last shell right there? That's a risky shot right there. I've only got one shell left, cause I'm not smart enough to pack more than two. Where's he at? He's gotta be somewhere over here. I don't think he can climb, otherwise he would've already. All right guys, I'm about positive y'all couldn't see very much about what was happening, but I shot him out the tree. Kinda, okay. I don't know if I shot him out of the tree or just knocked him out. But I knocked him out of the tree. He hit the ground, kinda done a couple donuts, and then I think he went over there. Maybe he tried to climb the tree, but didn't. And then I saw him run right across this log and that's whenever I threw up, almost shot again. But then I was like, I want to make sure I get a good shot if I'm going to shoot again. So I could have probably killed him, but at the same time, there's probably a good chance I wouldn't have. I'm not 100% sure how injured this squirrel actually is because he definitely disappeared right here. So he might come up here in a second, but he also may not. He may have actually decided to climb trees again. Look for any kind of blood. If he's not pouring the blood because he did run across this. If I don't find any blood here, then maybe I just nicked him or nick the limb under him even it looked like he'd done a few donuts but it could have just been because he landed upside down or something i'm not seeing anything and he definitely ran across this log no bloody footprints or anything like that i'm gonna look over here just to uh see if i can jump him up or something and shoot him but if i don't hear him or anything i think he, he might have got away one thing i can definitely say is that he's not hurt enough to die he should fully recover if i can't find him right here unless i find him dead or something I don't think I would. I got one more shell, and uh, I could either spend it trying to find him or spend it on another one. This guy probably went in a hole, got a med kit, stem, you know, little chug jug. He's fine. I bet he went in that hole right there, to be exact, honestly, though. Slow to the ground, everything. That guy definitely made it out alive. No, no need to worry about him. Well, I've still got a little daylight. This GoPro's really good in low light, so let's keep on hunting. I'm gonna have to make my way all the way back up to the hill. I think he was with another one, but she's definitely in the hole right now. I'll catch you guys in a minute whenever I figure out what I'm gonna do, because right now, I have no idea. It is the next day, guys, and instead of going to the river or going to the ridge, we're taking the 300 somewhere that is a very, very common find. In Kentucky, we are going squirrel hunting in a cow field or the edge of a cow field. You get the point. We're going to a place where there's squirrels and cows. It's pretty simple. And yes, I'm wearing blue shorts and uh, the same Crocs I think I was wearing yesterday. But uh, anyways, here we go. You'll see what I'm talking about whenever I get there. All right, guys, I am inside the cow field right now. If you look over there to the right, you can see the cow standing in the field. I didn't really think about this. Driving a Honda 300 in this cow field might actually not like play to my advantage because my uncle, who actually owns the cows and you know raises them and feeds them and all that good stuff, he literally drives a Honda 300 every single day. So if we get a random cow coming up to check us out and see if we have food, that's because my uncle drives this and they're pretty much accustomed to the sound of a Honda 300 giving them food so let's just keep that in mind if we have a random cow walking up to us trying to like eat out of my back pocket that's why but besides that oh honda getting it done old son oh honda getting it done old son now we just exited the cow field the cows can 100 percent still come in here but 
but we've entered the woods part where there's you know there's actually quite a bit of squirrels now this hill right here has always been hard for the mule the mule if you don't know is what i had before the defender but this this honda four-wheel drive with new tires shouldn't have a problem at all i'll go ahead and shift my weight to the to the front a little bit i right? don't pull up andrew player flip it on me we're just gonna wait here for a minute i did kind of drive right into the area that i'm gonna be hunting so probably not a good idea but i'll probably get my gun loaded wait for about 10 minutes and something let the woods calm down then walk the trail oh and we're gonna have to try our very best to try to avoid cow patties because shoes with holes in them isn't exactly the best thing to be stepping in cow patties with it doesn't end well i promise okay well i can uh, confidently say the squirrels just aren't moving today okay but to make it up to you guys i'm gonna replay a clip from like two years ago where i literally snuck right up on a squirrel and it was like that tree right there so like it's pretty much the same thing as right now and then after that clip is over i'll see you guys in the kitchen i have a squirrel in the freezer and we're gonna go ahead and cook that ka -chow. okay we're getting into some sketchy stuff now and some spider webs i'm actually gonna grab me a spider spider stick is a stick that you hold in front of you to catch all the spider webs probably one of the most useful things you can ever learn in early you know hunting season because there are spiders everywhere and i don't like spiders i hope you don't either this is fun bro this is real fun now we gotta try to go through this really tight squeeze and hopefully not hit the gun on anything all right all right all right all right, all right. we're good all right that's fine we're good Now we just gotta get the gun up. Let me get it here. There we go. We'll dig into the hunting fanny pack here and get some shells. There we go. Now we'll get in here in the front in these two little pockets. Slide these shells out. We'll go ahead and just put them in the back in the tube. And there we go. That's three shells. That's all you're allowed to have for hunting in Kentucky, at least for a shotgun at least. All right, boys, our first squirrel's been spotted. judge distance and i'll never find there's too many leaves it's too growed up i never find that squirrel. so i have two options i can either one just wait here for him to come closer or two i can go to him and i think i'm actually gonna do that so i gotta look around try to find my best route and i think it's over here maybe it doesn't really matter i just gotta be real quiet baby that's what you call close he landed right there that's all it took guys turn safety back on it's on right there we'll just uh 
I'll lay my gun right there. Good Hatfield, guys. $200 brand new at Walmart. Got the job done. I stalked him so far. I got right up on him, too. Welcome back to Cooking with KG. I'm your host, Andrew Flair. And uh, like I was saying, I didn't necessarily kill a squirrel in the video, and that's kind of sad and everything, but uh, it just happens that way. But like I was also saying, I have squirrel reserves, okay? I have two prime. I'm talking like prime. These are grade C squirrels. So I got two back legs. Is it enough to feed me? Absolutely not. It's not even enough to feed me like pretty much ever. But here's the thing. Squirrels are notorious for being extremely hard to cook. Even though they kind of look like a chicken leg, if you cook them like a chicken leg, it ain't gonna work, okay? It's like eating leather. And because of that, and because I've actually never cooked a successful squirrel that actually tasted good at least, even though this isn't a lot of meat, we're gonna be using this as a test, okay? Like the ACT, you know? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna boil them, cook them down, and this literally may take like six hours. Like, have you ever ate a squirrel, Ethan? Yep, squirrel dumplings. Did you like them? Absolutely. Have you ever had fried squirrel? No. There's a reason for that. It's because it's hard to do. So what we're gonna be eating is um, boiled squirrel. Which is pretty much like pressure cooked squirrel, but I don't know, it's just a different way to do it. And if I did want to do fried squirrel, I could always boil them like this toward, and actually cook them. Then just toss them in the skillet and actually fry them. Because frying them by itself, just ain't going to cut it. So as for now, that right there, put it right here. Turn that baby up about six. And uh, we uh, we wait until it gets dark outside and then we're ready to go. In the meantime, me and Ethan's going to cook a Tony's pizza because we know that squirrel is not going to feed us both. These things they're really good. They're really good, dude. Especially when you be cooking like I do. 400 degrees for 17 to 19 minutes. It's solid, dude. Right now it's 12.43, so uh, we'll let you know whenever the squirrel's getting close to being done. Because it, it, don't be surprised if it's literally 8 o'clock. I'm not even kidding. See you then. Welcome back. I'm your host, Braden Price Tag, and it's been, what time is it? Right. What time we start this? About 12. 12 something. 12.43. Now it's 12.35, so what's that, six hours? It's like three hours. Anyways, it's been boiling pretty much the whole time, and uh, it's um, it's been boiling on three, if that tells you anything. So like really, really slow, but for quite a long time. I can't smell anything. Oh, oh my goodness. You didn't even season it. Huh? You didn't even season that, did you? I actually did, but just like three seconds. I want you to smell this and tell me what you smell. Like? That smells like the cans of dumplings that you just yeet on there and warm up. My nose hairs are gone. Well, like, that's so you, hot. You, you did get right up on it. Here's the important thing, though. Here's the important thing. Check Is this out. Tender? Check this out. Watch this. Usually squirrels after they're cooked, hard. Look at these. You can stick a fork in it. If you got a squirrel that you can stick a fork in it, you've done something. Ask anybody that eats squirrels. I'm serious. It better be good. Man. That's good. Man, a lot. What? It looks good. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'm just kidding. We're going to eat it. You going to eat it with ketchup? Actually, I don't know. Where's that huckleberry sauce? I don't oh, know. Here we go. oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean the camera lens. Snag this when I was at my local Arby's. This is some of the best stuff on earth, okay? Is this stuff good? That's amazing. Should I do ketchup first, or should I do bronco berry from Arby's? Broncos. Oh, okay. Yeah, they eat the Denver bronco sauce. The thing is that if I eat this and I like it, I might not even use ketchup. And that's like, not like me. I think it'll taste good, dude. There's a few, there's, well, there's more than a few, but there's hairs on it. Not really gonna worry about that. Entrance wounds from shotgun pellets. There's a few hairs in it, but here's the thing, guys. I think that hairs, are just like black watermelon seeds. You could, they're totally edible. They just don't taste good. A little chewy. Oh my gosh. Is it good? That's real good. When it just comes off the bone like that, you know you did something right, buddy. You can put these in a crock pot, and I've done it before. I don't like a crock pot, because one side gets cooked, and one side gets absolutely dehydrated. I don't like it. I like this though. I agree with that. One thing I have to say about this, is it fried? No, it's not. Tastes like a chicken nugget? No, no. But it is meat and it's good meat. That's why squirrel dumplings are so popular because it's just meat and it's not exactly cooked. It's not like fried or anything. It's just cooked meat. You have to try it with sweet and sour. This pretty much is sweet and sour. Oh, okay. What do you think about it, Braden? Well, I think it's pricey. <laughs> I'm kidding, it was free. Actually, it's 25 cents. That shell wasn't free. 
No, it's actually 50 cents because I missed. Huh, what about that? If you want to watch another one of my squirrel catching cooks that did not turn out so well, you can click right up here or for all my catching cooks right over here. Like what I was saying a second ago, most of these in this playlist, they're not successful, but they're mildly entertaining.